Now we move on to the technique of camera movement. Now this idea is quite similar to the idea of the camera technique and the shot. And these techniques really work together to create the way in which the camera is moved. So it's important to have an understanding of these as well. So firstly, we get the crane shot. Now, as the name suggests, the crane shot is often used by composers of films to signify the end of a film or a scene through putting literally the camera on a crane. This effect is achieved by the camera being put on a crane that can move upwards or downwards. So you can get um, a bit of movement happening with the camera. The camera is moving around and you're seeing sort of different things as it moves. We then get to the tracking or dolly shot. Now, essentially the tracking shot is a shot that moves on tracks, that's why it's called the tracking shot. And the dolly shot is mounted on a trolley. So we're getting similar techniques, not quite the same though. This is used to explore a room, for example, or to follow a character through a room, or to show people's movements as they perhaps walk through a corridor or something like that. It's where the camera is really following the character, so it is quite suggestive of action and, you know, of characters interacting and dialogue occurring. The composer of a film gives the viewer a detailed tour of a situation through this technique. Panning is another technique very similar to this. The idea that panning is used to give a panoramic view of a set or a setting. And this is where the camera pivots to show more of the scene. So again, you're getting that really important element of camera movement to show the different elements that are important in either scene. This can also be used to establish a scene. So often you'll get this at the beginning of a scene working with an extreme long shot in order to show things um, at a lot of scale. So you're seeing a lot in the frame all at once. And then you're also seeing movement as it moves along. So perhaps, you know, you're seeing mountains as the camera moves over those mountains. Camera angles are another really important element of that idea of the camera. So again, this works with those ideas we've already looked at of the camera shot and the camera movement. So we have firstly the bird's eye view, which as suggests is the, is that the view of such as if a bird was flying over the scene. So an angle that looks directly down upon a scene, you're really getting the view from the sky down on the scene. And this is often used as an establishing angle along with an extreme long shot. We then get the concept of the high angle. Now the high angle looks down upon a subject. A character shot with a high angle will look vulnerable or small. And this is often used to demonstrate to the audience the perspective of a particular character. So demonstrating status through whether things are up high or down low. That's one of the uses of this technique. We then get to the eye level angle. Now the eye level angle puts the audience on equal footing with the characters. This is the most commonly used angle in most films. So this is the sort of angle that's going to be used if just people are normally talking to each other on the ground, there's interaction between characters. You're generally going to get things on ground level. So the cameraman's probably literally holding that camera. And this allows the viewers to feel comfortable with the characters through the fact that they're just on their own level. We then get to the low angle. So this is obviously the opposite of the high angle, where things are actually looking up at the character. So this is the opposite of a high angle and instead makes a character look more powerful because you're getting their view from below. So you're really seeing their perspective as, you know, a smaller person gazing at a bigger person or a, or a large object or building. This can make the audience feel vulnerable and small by looking up at that character. So the final idea of a camera angle is the Dutch angle. Now the Dutch angle is used to demonstrate confusion of a character or the strangeness of a place. So you're often going to get this if you're watching perhaps a fantasy film or some sort of science fiction film where the world isn't entirely real. It's used in fantasy and often in dream sequences. So you're getting that sense of disorientation that this isn't real. A Dutch angle is used to disorient you. So you really get that sense that this isn't real, this is a fantasy sequence. So this brings us to the end of part one of our two-part video on visual techniques. If you join us in just a moment in part two, we'll be continuing to look at techniques beyond how the camera is used. So other ways that film users construct a film and speak to you through the language of visual texts.